Questions from the group? I'm uh, very excited to be here. Thank you. Um, wanted to introduce, uh, obviously, Jared Karstetter, who's here. Um, big reason why we brought uh, Jared down today was um, one of our first recruits that we brought in three and a half years ago from right up the road in Spokane from Pullman. And um, he's a, been an All-American uh, academically. Uh, he's been a great player for us. And he's one of those guys that uh, changes programs. And um, he's had a big influence uh, in our change within our, our, our team. Uh, and I think you're going to see a lot of that this fall. But uh, I'm very excited about our upcoming year. We think we've got a nice youth, youthful football team. Um, has a chance to surprise a lot of people. Questions? Question here in the center. Paul, one reason, one problem you guys have had the last three years is stopping the run. How are you going to improve that this year, uh, especially coming off with some injuries in your linebacker core and some kids lost? Yeah, you know, um, it has been an issue. You know, obviously a lot of things have been, but um, our defense, I believe, has more physical strength than we've had, more team speed than we've had. So the combination of that, more, more uh, game experience heading into the season than we've had, um, good chance we'll start just one or two seniors on the whole defense. But we have players that have played. Uh, and so I think that combination with added size, strength, and confidence um, is going to make a big difference for us. I, I think we'll stop the run. I know through spring football there are signs of things we've, we've not shown uh, in our time there on defense, which was very encouraging to see. Um, so I, I'm pretty confident we're going to take a big step on defense. Right here in the center. Hey, Paul. Hey, would you give us uh, one or two names that you expect to really make a huge move forward on your team, guys, what we would be talking about at the end of the season? You know, ho hopefully um, there's some guys that we feel have every reason to break out and that will stay healthy enough to do that. I think on offense, um, you know, you start with, with Ricky Galvin, who, who was a, a running back who broke his arm in his first play of his career against Oklahoma State last year. I think he has a chance to do some really good things for us. Um, I, and, that, and that's on offense in particular. Uh, I think Christoph Williams, another wide receiver who we had to register because of injury uh, this last year, um, is another receiver that can add to the mix with Jared and, and Marquise Wilson. Uh, defensively, um, you know, I, I anticipate uh, uh, Sokopi Kafusi, a big linebacker, making a big difference for us, um, who, who's played a limited amount of role there. Um, and then I, I, a veteran player that had it one great spring, and that was Alex Hoffman. I think Alex uh, has a chance to be one of the finer linebackers in our conference. Far right, second row. Coach, how difficult, or if, has it gotten worse or better since the Pacific Northwest? You could probably put Oregon in there, but also Oregon State and even Washington. With the improvement of those teams, how has it affected your recruiting? You know, um, I don't know that it's affected it a whole lot. We, we've gone about our business of trying to recruit a, site, uh, a type of person and with the right DNA. And when I say that, I mean from the neck up. Uh, and we're looking for, for kids that, that have uh, uh, the great passion for the game, love the game, uh, tough. Um, they're a great person. Um, and it's got that attitude and work ethic. And a lot of times from the neck down, uh, it may not be the most flashy guy all the time, um, but they're very productive and they're great football players and they, and they can help you build a team. And uh, that's what we've been trying to do. And, and, and um, we go after guys that fit our profile. And uh, sometimes uh, a player may not be as sexy as what other people may think, but um, we're gonna get the guy that fits who, we're, who we are and what we're building. Back right. Jared, I talked to Jeff Toole this summer and, and asked him about kind of the lack of respect among the other teams when you're playing a, a Pac-12 opponent. And, and it seemed like he was legitimately 
angry just kind of recalling the experiences and stuff like that. Did you sense there was an improvement in the respect from your opponents last year? And, and how does that play in the locker room in terms of kind of generating a little fire? Yeah, I think that we were more competitive, uh, especially at the end of last year. And um, any sort of lack of respect that we feel uh, as a team, I think that we just use that as motivation, you know, to go out there on game day and um, compete and prove ourselves. Question in the back center. Kind of a two-part question. Uh, you guys have all of your offensive line returning. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, all but all but one. Okay. So uh, how do you guys uh, look to, I guess, improve that offensive line protection, protecting Jeff Tool? Yeah. You know the the numbers when people say look at all the sacks we've given up. I think you you got a couple things you got that come into play. Um, first of all, we had two junior college players playing their first fall at the Division One level for us in that offensive line. Uh, last year starting, and we also had a, a true freshman offensive lineman playing in there. Uh, we had a running game that wasn't very effective, um, and a receiving core that was still young and growing together. So the, the combination of that put a lot of pressure on Jeff. We couldn't, we couldn't run the ball well enough. We got in predictable passing situations. And then we had an offensive line that just had not worked together very often. So those were all for ingredients that, that didn't allow us um, to do as well and give up those numbers. But I think a lot of those things are solved. I think our running game, uh, we're a lot more physical in the offensive line. Um, we're athletic. Uh, we have experience. Uh, our running backs are better. Uh, our quarterbacks and then the continuity with some of our young receivers and Jeff are better. So all those ingredients are going to equate to higher productivity. I know through spring football, um, we were executing and doing things that we've never done uh, and at a much higher clip. And so I think through the summer work and through fall camp, you're going to see a, a, a pretty explosive offense in the fall. Question in the center. Paul, what is the next step for Jeff Tool? Yeah, you know, it's, that's a good question. He, he, needs to, he needs to be able to take a team on his back and carry it. And uh, uh, when games are tight, he needs to be able to to make the plays to win the games. And, and I think he, those are the steps he's going to take and he, and, and he will take. But I think that's the next step is to truly, you know, be in tight situations, carry this football team into, into, into the fourth quarter and then make the plays to win it. And um, I do think that's the step that's going to happen with this football team. I think that uh, we're going to go as he goes in a lot of ways. Um, but what I also like is we do have more of a supporting cast around him and on defense that we've never had. So it's not going to be only on Jeff Tool, which is great. There needs to be some games where he isn't necessarily the big factor, hopefully, and we can still win the ball game. Um, and I'd like to see our team take that step. And I also like to see Jeff take the step that I mentioned. Think in the center. Vince. Paul, you've changed four assistant coaches over the last two years. How's that changed? How you guys get your work done, and what kind of uh, improvement has it brought to the, the practice field? Well, we, we've just added a lot of veteran coaches to our staff, um, and I and. That is, that's helped us, particularly on special teams, number one, with Dave Unger uh, doing that this last year. And then Steve Morton in the offensive line, a former Coug, former coach there, has coached all over the country. He's one of the best offensive line coaches in the country. Has really settled our offense down. Um, and then defensively, adding Chris Tormey, who's very regional, uh, is coached at Idaho as a head coach in Nevada Arena, was at Washington for 18 years. Um, born and raised in Spokane, Washington. Just great, great experience. and. Um, a great mentor for some of our, our young linebackers that we think are extremely talented. Uh, and then we had a Todd Howard, who was at UCLA the previous five years as a defensive line coach, who uh, has NFL experience and, and as a coach there as well, has a Super Bowl ring with the Rams. They just, they just bring a lot of experience and um, credibility right now. And so it's, it's, it's been a good impact for our players um, at those particular positions. And um, I, I really think that, that it's, it's made a big difference already in spring football. And as the season moves along, uh, it'll again have a big impact for us. Any other questions? OK, that'll do it. Coach, Jared, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks. All right, at this time, we'll take a 10-minute break. Uh, we will